This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! And guess. Welcome back to Miles Edge, we're Face Attorney Investigations Prosecutor's Path, everybody. So, we're about to do the final Little Thief sequence, like, Oh yeah, ever. that's right. Yep, we're Grand Turnabout, middle part one, and Let's we're go. we're gonna try to recreate the events of the SS5 incident, which was uh, 12 years ago. Yep. <laughs> sure. Dun, 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 dun. The SS5 incident. The incident occurred on a winter day 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. We've kidnapped President Juan, they said. Kidnapped? The SS5 incident was the case of President Juan's kidnapping. They demanded a ransom of a hundred million dollars. A hundred million? Wait, just how much is that? It's such a large amount, she's having trouble visualizing it. That night, my old man was the last person to meet with the president. They were together at the Zhang Fa Embassy until midnight on February 10th. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up until he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Zhang Fa government frantically gathered the money. After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned safe and sound. So, President Huang's been the president since 12 years ago. That's really amazing! Well, being in office for so long is just a small part of how amazing the man is. Lane seems a bit too happy when he said that. A bit happy. <laughs> not too happy. He seemed too happy for the it's president. Not, it's He's not, not like, that great. It's not like Baron Seabear's too much birthday. <laughs> <laughs> too much birthday. <laughs> and what happened to the kidnappers? Well, a top secret covert investigation was carried out, then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was Patricia Rowland. Gotcha. Then, the reason you came to the prison a few days ago. Yeah, I was put on extended leave from Interpol. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of his post as bodyguard. But he continued to investigate as a regular police officer until he finally found the culprit. And it was none other than Patricia Rowland. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went unsolved. Crushed in both body and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence. At least that's what I think. But I can't see those documents for myself. So that's where my story ends. What should we do? With only this much information, even the little thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. Ugh. Is there really nothing we can do? Uh, is looks this like Franziska? Looks like you can use some help. Who's that? Yeah, oh. it's Franziska. And, and Raymond Shields. Looks like you could use some help. Even I forgot. Franziska! And Mr. Shields, too! We finished up with the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. Here, take this. This is... Ah! It's the case files for the SS5 incident, sir! SS5 Good incident files jotted them. down in the organizer. Thanks, Franziska. When Roland mentioned 12 years ago during the trial, it caught my interest. I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. Sharp as attack. I expected no less from you, Franziska. Don't get in the wrong idea. In the wrong idea? Don't <laughs> get the wrong idea! <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. I didn't prepare those documents for you, the former prosecutor. I did it for the sake of the investigator taking up the case his father left behind. Sis! But, I thought information on the SS5 incident was restricted to the public. I like how they, they kind of have the bond going, too. Yeah. Because they were, like, co-workers for a yeah. while. That restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case, Blaise de Best. Blaise de Best was the prosecutor in charge? Him. However, 
ever. As a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. Good! <laughs> it's all thanks to his son. Sebastian, by bringing down his father, the door to the past case will be... Have his... <laughs> 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 exactly! Let me try that again. By bringing down his father, the door to this past case has been opened. Prosecutor DeBest is currently wrapping things up in Patricia Rowland's trial. He told me to relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his courts to me. You guys just take care of the case on your end. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the last we hear of Blaze's trial, but like at this point we're like... You're like, yeah, I know Sebastian can handle it on his own, Sebastian which is awesome. Fine. <laughs> He's become quite reliable right before our very eyes. Truly. Alrighty then. This is perfect. Now that we have the files, just leave the recreation to me. Oh, we should take a look at the files. This is five incident files. Case summary, the president of Zhang Fa, Di Jun Huan, was kidnapped on February 10th, 10, uh, 12 years ago. The kidnappers demanded a ransom of $100 million. Dai Long Lane confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was at the Zhang Fa embassy until midnight. Prosecutor? Well, Blaze was the prosecutor and Patricia Rowland was they the don't, suspect. They don't have anything listed about the defense attorney? Nope. I feel like that would be really important. Defense attorney? Gregory Edgeworth. Oh, no. Wait, no, that was... Wait, no. 12 years ago. What if it was like... Marvin Grossberg. <laughs> Absolutely not. It could be, um... Robert Hammond. Yeah, it also could be um, Kay's father. Burn Faraday? Uh -huh. That's true, it could have. This is perfect! Indeed. Well then, let us begin. According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the tower plaza. Then let's head to the plaza right away. Uh, 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 uh. Penny's like, where are you going? Why did everybody come? <laughs> we didn't need everybody. Penny didn't, Penny didn't come. April 6th, 325 p.m. outside the Grand Tower Tower Plaza. Kay, would you please activate the little Mr. Thief? Right! With the case files recreating, everything should be a snap. Where should I start? Where indeed? According to these documents, it seems there was a witness to the kidnapping of the president. A freelance journalist by the name of Jack Cameron. Jack Cameraman, more like it. He has a very bad mustache. He needs to just be clean shaven. Yeah, however... He happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and was murdered by the culprit. So that would mean that the place he saw the president at was here. Here? At the Grand Tower? No, the Grand Tower was only built around a year ago, Kay. Before that, this place contained mostly old abandoned buildings. However, 12 years ago, this place was... Ha! Now you're finally talking about some stuff that I know. Yeah. Twelve years ago, at this very spot was... The Happy Family Home. What's that, pal? It was a place where children who had lost their parents could live. Or to put it simply, it was an orphanage. So, the president was kidnapped at that orphanage. Why was he at the orphanage? Why indeed. And the head of that facility at the time was Patricia Rowland. I don't want her in charge of any kids. Apparently, Roland always referred to it as her home, just like she's doing to the prison now. It is my home. It seems the suspicion would naturally fall upon her. Patricia Roland, Blaise de Best, and President Juan. I feel like Patricia Roland working in an orphanage would be like Miss Hannigan. Yeah. Just without booze. <laughs> so oh, she wouldn't. At be first, afraid. I was thinking. <laughs> Mario Booze. <laughs> no. B-O-O-Z-E. B-O-O-Z-E. The darkness that remains from the SS5 incident still casts a shadow on the present case. Kay, I'd like for you to input the investigation data from Jack Cameron's murder case. We can probably assume that he was killed by one of the kidnappers. So if we solve the murder case, we'll know who the kidnappers were, right? Precisely. I'm counting on you. Everybody gathers around as Kay plugs in her data. Thank you for not doing that stupid introduction, Kay. Oof. That's awfully detailed, Kay. <laughs> what the heck is this? Everything's green! I've come to expect such reactions. This is a recreation of the grounds of the facility that stood here 12 years ago. Based on the documents from the police investigation, 
I recreated the scene to show what it looked like when the police arrived at 7 a.m. the next day. It appears a fair amount of snow had piled up here. Yeah, I heard that the footprints in the snow were prime pieces of evidence. The snow fell during the day, on the day of the incident. So the snow only fell before the crime took place. Which means the footprints wouldn't have been erased by any further snow. No. I must make sure to pay close attention to these footprints. Begin investigation in the front yard of the Let's orphanage! Talk to all the people. Hey, girls. What a scoop! Would you look at that? Those folks would have done no turkey! Maybe they're sick or something. But their clothes are green, too. Well, I'll be! Their clothes are all green, too! I reckon this ain't no ordinary disease! You picked up on something good! Looks like you're taking it to the next level! Yes, Chief! It looks like there's no way we'll be getting a word in. Are you pinching your nose every time you voice Nicole? No. It looked like it. Mm, this is in the call, y'all. No. Not that I have any desire to intervene. That would be funny. Yeah, what's up? So there was an orphanage here 12 years ago. And what's more, the head of the orphanage was Miss Roland. Talk about a surprise. So that means this was where the SS5 incident occurred 12 years ago. I like how, like, Patricia Roland, who was just, like, the case 2 killer, is now, like, really oh, important to the story. Oh, so important. The one with the president, or the one where the president of Zhang Fa was kidnapped, right? Yes, and the only witness, Jack Cameron, was then subsequently murdered. However, when you consider that this case was classified as top secret... It starts to smell fishy, like there's something hidden behind the case. Even so, the people involved in this incident... Aren't they all people that we already know? Patricia Rowland, Blaise de Best, and the president of Zhang Fa. The cases that we've been involved in recently, and the SS5 incident. It's hard to think that they're not related. Let's steal the truth hidden behind this case. I'll keep updating the info if we find anything new, so... Well, let's focus on the areas that have changed in the recreation. Little thief. To think that your little Mr. Thief would help us out once again. It's just little thief. No matter how useful little thief is, if there's any error with the info, the recreation could come out a bit strange. If you find anything strange, please present some evidence. So I can examine things like I normally do, even if it's just a recreation? We know this yeah. already. Please go all out and investigate every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I don't have enough data to do it now, but... Once you've gathered enough info, I can recreate the scene at a different moment in time. Alright, I'll ask for your help when the time comes. This is for the people who didn't play the previous games. But we've already done the recreation in the the prison case. Mm. And I think we did it in the uh, British Bake Off case, too. Oh. Scruffy, don't you dare say a word! I'm warning you! Ah, Mr. Edgeworth, please help me, sir! What is it, Detective Gumshoe? It's about the story behind the SSF-5 incident, sir! Even though Blaze may have lost his authority, there's no way you could get confidential documents this quickly! That got me curious, so I made a few calls and I asked around. And I found out that Miss Von Karma used all sorts of forceful tactics to- Scruffy, I thought I warned you! Ah! You've done a lot for us, Franziska. I promise I will bring this to an end with my own hands. <laughs> and treat you to a nice Italian dinner. <laughs> you better get me pasta. And unlimited bread. <laughs> yeah. Free flower beds and snow. Agent Lane, what's the matter? Something strange. I wasn't able to read the SS5 incident case files until now. Since Blaze had all, all had all access to that information restricted. Here's the thing. I feel like Blaze, being the prosecutor, ju who just could just be like, oh, I didn't put the right autopsy report in the case files. Oh, I didn't do this <sighs> thing at all. Like this was before he smoked all that. <laughs> well, I, I'm not trying to even do oh, his okay. voice. But like, you know, like s clearly, since Von Karma was just like, oh, I took the bullet and I stole it. Like, right, yeah. he could totally have done something like right. that. Right. Yeah, that's right. And yet, I feel like I've seen this exact scene somewhere before. What do you mean? Where did I see this? If I could just remember. He looks deep in thought. I should leave him alone for a while. Just... Nope. No. After the SS5 incident, the president completely changed. Well, he must have felt like his trust had been betrayed. I guess it's only natural. He cut off all ties with the Lane clan, putting an end to our deep bond of trust. My old man wanted to at least apologize in some way. 
so we tried to go see the president more times than I can count. Of course, the president refused to meet with him. He wouldn't even give him the time of day. I don't know if it was from the bodyguards, but there were times he'd come back all beaten up. <laughs> but me standing around talking about the past doesn't do jack, does it? Nope. I shall be the judge of that. For now, just keep telling us what you know. You're still as tactless as ever. Well, I figured you'd say as much. The SS5 incident. The fall of my old man was also the fall of the Wayne clan. The family that failed to protect the president. That's what we became. My old man started to investigate the case like he was possessed. Could someone so driven by obsession truly conduct a proper investigation? Sheesh. You really don't pull your punches, Mr. Prosecutor. Don't think I blindly trusted in his investigation just because he's my old man. His investigation was meticulous down to the last detail. Apparently, he even conducted a thorough interview of each and every kid at the orphanage. He interviewed every child? I wonder how fruitful his results were. Hey, bro. What if, like... What? Ooh. What if one of the characters we know in this case was at that orphanage? Hmm. So, so, um, Co not Cody. John Child. Marsh. John Marsh, I think, is 13. He's 13. 12 years ago, he would have been one. Yep. He totally could have been at this orphanage. And then, for whatever reason... 14-year-old Courtney decided 14 -year -old to adopt. 14-year-old Courtney was like, I need this child. <laughs> um, other option could be, like, um, how old was the best? Uh, I think he's 17. 17? So he would have been he, young. I think, because clearly Blaze was married. I think there was a massive fallout with that marriage. And then... Blaze was like, I don't have time for kids, and then just threw him <laughs> here. Kids. Kids. <laughs> yes, he's the embodiment of the grumpy, the grumpy grizzly. grizzly from <laughs> Berenstein Bears. Huh. Kids. Oh my god. Uh, I, it's never outright confirmed what happened with Blaze's wife. It is implied that he had her killed, though. Okay, so killed her. Also bad. So, um, maybe he was like, I don't have time for stupid just, kids, just and like, then just at, threw his son in this orphanage. Yeah, so, like, once these vids go up, and you know everything you do at Bubble A's, like, when you when he talks about his wife, it's, like, the way he's talking, and the way he talks about other people, and you're like, did he have her killed? <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Shifu, I know it's not my place, but I have a request. Please, do a roll call, just like old times. Just like old times, huh? <laughs> what a lark. Guess I have no choice. Roll call! One! Oh, I'm sorry. A roll call with one person is really lacking. That's nonsense. It's got nothing to do with numbers. Even though you're the only one here, the pack is always one, right? If you think it's lacking, then how howl loud enough to make up for the rest of the pack. Roll call! A one! 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 That man. Is he on the verge of tears? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle Ray. This scene sure puts a chill in your bones. Uncle Ray needs a hot babe to keep him warm. <laughs> Go to Franzi. Could you please try to be a little bit more serious? Oh, if that's what Kay wants, I guess I have no choice. Miles, this is where it all began. Isn't that right? Yes, I fear that this is the case. <sighs> what was Patricia and Blaze's true goal? There's still so many mysteries yet to be solved. Indeed, it is just as you say. Particularly, the mystery of... What will happen to Kay Ray's love? Isn't it suspenseful? Not even a little. You just couldn't resist, could you, Mr. Shields? Why can't you ever stay serious for more than a minute? I think he's genuinely incapable of staying serious for that long. That's like me. That's why there's like a murder happening, I'm like... I don't care about the body, is there another... Yep. Mother Talk and to son. the people. What do you want? John, I'd like you to tell me the exact details of your kidnapping. You were kidnapped at the garbage pickup area, right? Why'd you go there? Wait, we gotta hear this music. Alright, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to act as a go-between. I can just talk to the old man directly. So, he says, looks like he's finally starting to warm up to you. Went through the garbage pickup to throw away the flowers I found on the body. It was nearby, and I thought it'd be harder to find there than if I just tossed them in the trash can. 
I went there last night too, but the gate was locked. And that's why you went there again today to dispose of them. Yeah, but when I got there, someone suddenly grabbed me from behind. And you Sleepy Z's on you, right? Catching Z's is now super easy with Sleepy Z's! Even though she was also a victim to it, she seems to have taken a liking to the slogan. Whoever grabbed me was really strong. But that's all I know. I have no idea who it was. I see. So that's what happened. Well, we know it can't be Penny. I mean... <laughs> no, Penny's super strong. What you... <laughs> see, what you don't know is Penny takes off her jacket and then her arm muscles just bulge through. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if Marty's actually serious about this or no, if she's I'm, just I'm, continuously I'm joking. I'm she I'm keeps mentioning, like, I bet Penny's the one who did it. It'd be such a good twist. <laughs> it definitely would. Like, Penny's like the underworld ruler. And she's, she's like, I'm just, I'm just a simple... A simple movie attendant. I don't know anything. I'm just a simple ice cream thing. Exactly. <laughs> After the drugs wore off, did you notice anything about your surroundings? Those drugs were brought to you by Sleepy Z's. Catching Z's is now super easy with Sleepy Z's. It was kind of cold when I woke up. I was in a dark, empty room. Boxes with foreign writing on them were lying around, so I figured I was in a warehouse. The whole, pile, the whole place was like a giant refrigerator. It was a commercial warehouse. That's right. John was rescued thanks to the collective efforts of Kay and Detective Gumshoe. Since it was still a bit cold, the cooling unit's power must not have been cut for too long. For some reason, they didn't think to take my phone, so... I used it to call for help. I see. In any case, it's good that you're safe and sound, John. He used his phone to call for help, and no one came to help? No, I think he called Detective Gumshoe, or he called the police. Yeah. Once he finally came to, which took a while. Yeah, which took a oh, while. Oh, okay. And, then, and like, then they're like, oh, Gumshoe's right over there. Okay, because I was about to be like, he should call like 911 ASAP, but I forgot yeah. he was asleep. I don't need your fake sympathy, old man. What an incorrig- what an incorrigible child. He's just like a certain someone I know. Can we talk to the missus? Well, Miz, maybe. Yep. Please, ask me anything you wish. You have my heartful thanks for bringing John back. Oh, even the thought of him not coming back makes me... Hey, old man, don't bully my mom! No, that wasn't my intention. Woo, look at him go! Mommy's little knight in shining armor! He's so cool! It's not like that! Quit blabbering stupid stuff about me! John, please wait. May I proceed, Mr. Edgeworth? My actions were unbecoming of one who calls herself a servant of the goddess of law. I won't ask for forgiveness. However, I... Judge Courtney, I am not as well acquainted with the goddess of law as you are. However, isn't that the goddess also a mother of other gods? Ah! Uh... The law makes exceptions for extenuating circumstances. It understands a mother's heart. I'd say perhaps your goddess sympathizes with you more than you think. M Mr. Edgeworth? I don't get it. What the heck are you two blabbering about? It's okay, John. I don't have a clue either. Neither do I. I believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy oh, Spirit. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I, I don't know what sort of messed up stuff Courtney went through, but you know what? If the goddess of law makes her happy, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it seems the dust has settled on day one of Patricia Rowland's trial. Yes. While a decision is yet to be reached, I would say a guilty verdict is quite likely. I'm sure a thorough investigation into her connection with Blaze will be conducted as well. But then, boom, she gets Christoph Gavin as her defense attorney. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> once he and the judge just go get burritos, the rest is history. Yeah. That's how it goes. Plus, he's not above forging evidence. After seeing Sebastian today, I know we can put our faith in him. Just like Kay, Sebastian is also in the midst of training for the future ahead. Hmm, I see. When you say it like that, I guess we have more in common than I thought. I said a few mean things to him, so next time we meet, I'd like to apologize to him. I'm sure you will get your opportunity. But for now... Yes. At present, solving this case is our top priority. Alright, let's actually start looking at stuff now. Let's look at the crap. A flower bed. According to the data, this facility had three gardens. That's a lot of gardens for the... And each of these gardens contained three flower beds. So in the same spots where the dude died? Hmm, the way these flower beds are lined up. 
Have I seen this arrangement somewhere before? Yep. Since it was during the winter, there were no flowers in bloom. What a shame. Hmm? What's this yellow flower? Hmm? Why is there a single flower here? That is a lion lily. It's a very rare type of lily. Did you say lion lily? That's the flower Miss Courtney gave to the president! What's it doing here? Could it be just a coincidence? If I recall, the lion lily originates from Asia. In the language of flowers, it means the bond between parent and child. I never knew you were so familiar with flowers. That much is common sense. You simply lack in your studies, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. I don't know anything about lion lilies. Neither do I. Oh. It's a swing decorated with the face of an elephant. It looks like there's some kind of motor attached to the other side of the elephant. There's one thought that has crossed my mind- that crossed the minds of every top-class swinger. If only I could do a full 360. With the powerful motor rotating the swing, that dream could finally be achieved! Rotating with a motor. But wouldn't that be dangerous? Mr. Edgeworth, you can't fulfill your dreams unless you're willing to take some risks. Is that the real problem here? I think the real problem is- Trisha Rowland was the, the lady in charge, so she's like, yeah, we'll get a motorized swing that can kill children. <laughs> sure. No problem. These footprints stop near the body. They must be Mr. Cameron's footprints. He sure has some big feet. They look like a size 11. Um, that's pretty normal size for, for America, but this is Japanifornia. Hmm. I mean, I know people who have like size 13 feet. So. Yeah, I wear a size 12 and a half. Oh, I didn't know that. For were... tennis shoes. Oh, okay, for tennis shoes. For, like, dress shoes, it's generally a smaller size, but I like having shoes I can just slip on and off easily. Yeah. According to the data, his shoes match the footprints. The footprints here seem to lead to and from the body. These footprints were believed to be the culprits. The shoe size is about a size 7. That's fairly average. Yeah, that's like my shoe size. Seems we won't be able to tell who the culprit is from these footprints. I feel like Patricia Rowland's feet are way bigger than that. <laughs> oh, my feet are killing me. No, you need, I mean, you need big feet in order to carry big girth. The, the She's not of. fat. Okay. She just wears a She's huge wears coat. She wears the most fattening coat in existence. She wears basically Donald's overcoat from Donald Snow White. Swing up, swing swing up, swing up, this has mostly melted, but it appears to be a snowman. It has a scarf and a hat. It must have melted since it was dressed so warmly. The poor thing has even lost one of the buttons it was used for eyes. The temperature reaches its lowest point at dawn. Perhaps it would have refrozen later. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Once a snowman melts, even if it freezes up again, it becomes an ice man instead of a snowman. Nah. What? Is that what she was expecting me to say? <laughs> Woof. These playground toys are modeled after a hare and a tortoise, like the fable- Oh, I thought that was a dog. <laughs> oh. The tortoise and the hare complete, uh, competed in race, and in, in the end, the hare lost. And now for something completely different. It's time for a K-Quiz! Why did the hare lose? There are three choices. Hmph, I already know the answer. It's because the hare took a nap. One, the hare's favorite shoes were stolen by the Yadagarasu. Two, the tortoise trained with the Yadagarasu until it became faster than the hare. Or three, unbeknownst to the two animals, the Yadagarasu stole the victory from the shadows. Those are my only choices? Is it too hard for you? Kay, I'll give you a hint. It starts with th She wants me to pick number three? Polar bear house. This bear-shaped igloo is both cute and scary at the same time. I hereby declare this a bear glue. Hmm, it looks as though this igloo could fit three people inside. A bear glue? Yeah, I bet you could live up to three years inside this bear glue. Three years? What about the summertime? The b the igloo would melt. Mr. Edgeworth, say that again! Say that one more time! The igloo would melt. Tch. 